A little advice. A little advice. Come on, come on, come on, yeah. Just a little advice. Just a little advice with Christine Little. Check it out. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Little Advice Podcast, a podcast where me, comedian Christine Little, gives a little advice to one of my guests. It's only a little advice because I only have a little degree. Uh, I also read a lot of self-help books, so I'm like, yeah, I can tell people about these books I'm reading and, and pretend like I'm smart. This is episode number nine with one of my best friends, Sophia Alexandra. She's been on Comedy Central's This Is Not Happening, writer on Danger Eggs, and that, that one on an Emmy. She's been to, like, every comedy festival she's done. She's just, she makes me laugh consistently. I love her. We talk about her inability to keep habits going. She'll pick up one habit, and then another one will drop off. So I give her some tips on that, or I try my best to... And podcast related, if you want to talk more about the episodes or the podcast in general, please head over to the Facebook group. Just search A Little Advice in Facebook and then you will find the podcast. And for me, I've got some shows coming up. Well, I've got like one show coming up. It's on Tuesday, October 2nd at the Dime Bar in West Hollywood. So if you want to come by there. I also like get a lot of last minute shows, so... Go to my website and check out christinelittle.net. Yes, it's a .net for real. And then see if anything's popped up on my calendar. And also, you guys, please rate, subscribe, leave a review. It, it just makes the, the podcast appear higher in the algorithm or, or something like that. And it really gives me the validation that I clearly need. I want to give a shout out to the last reviewer, Jessica5924. She wrote a really nice review. She said I was amazing and a joy and a homeowner and I was caring. So that was really nice of her. Thank you, Jessica, for that shout out. And with no further ado, here is episode number nine with the amazing Sophia Alexandra. Thank you so much for listening to A Little Advice. Ready to rock with Sophia Alexandra. She's scooting in her chair. How you doing over there? I am doing fine. I brought my mind. I'm gonna have a fun time with Miss Little tonight. That sounds cool. This is how the podcast is going to go for the rest of the show. I'm so sorry, listeners. (laughs) (laughs) I am here with my really good friend, Sophia Alexandra and Kyle Clark and LaCroix. Uh, Sponsored by Coconut LaCroix, unofficially. (laughs) Yeah. Some people say it tastes like suntan lotion. Fuck those people. That's what I I heard. I think it's great. It tastes like like a vacation. I agree. Thank you. It tastes like we're wearing bikinis right now. I know. I'm not drinking it, but uh, but you're looking at me drinking it, and it's pretty similar. I I recall what it was like to drink it before. (laughs) So, wow, this is getting off to a non problematic start. (laughs) And I'm so excited that you're here. I've been trying to get Sophia Alexandra on this podcast for ages. Guys, her people did not call my people. I was like, I am very busy. I have two cats. My people. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean your people? (laughs) Um, Okay, so Sophia, what's your problem? I mean, so many, honestly. Um, (laughs) um, But one of them. Really a good one is consistency. I have a problem with consistency. I think it's because partly because our career is kind of like piecemeal. Like everything you do uh, are, to be. Are we in a joint we're, career? We are. <laughs> as you know, we're in a career marriage. Um, <laughs> a career no, <laughs> a career marriage. <laughs> but it's true that, uh, you know, uh, if you're trying to do what we do, it's like you do stand up, you write, you try to get staffed, you go out on auditions, you try to get booked. Mostly what comedy is, is trying to get to do comedy. <laughs> That's about 99%. Yeah, of it. yeah. And then actually doing comedy is like not a big part of it, <laughs> which is the best part. So it sucks balls. <laughs> and um, I like try to always instill good habits that I can have consistently. So I feel like I have 
uh, things to like a good skeleton that I can put like flesh on Ooh. and I'm, I'm a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> then I eat the flesh. No. Um, so yeah. So I feel like there's things that I write down every day that I need to do. Like I uh-huh. do to do lists and they're helpful, but I think I need to go like next level to like a schedule or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to account for more of my time. Because like I'll pursue a good habit for a bit where I'll be like, Oh, I'm making my bed every day. Sorry. If you're like laughing at me, trying to make myself make my dad ba- a lot of people bed probably, every don't. Day. probably people are like, Sophie, that takes two minutes. You're a psycho, but okay. So I'll do that for like a week and I'm like, all right, I'm doing it. But then I'll notice some other habit falls off. Like what? Like, um, you know, I try to do the elliptical and shit for 30 minutes a day. So I've been really good about that, but I've been eating not that well. So it's like, I have to, I'm always, always dropping the one of the balls that I'm juggling. So are you trying to like keep up multiple habits at once? Do you like introduce a new habit and then you're like, okay, I've been doing that for five minutes. Time to add this one on. And then you're like. No, Keep I've adding, been adding. patient about adding, adding them on. Like now I've been doing the elliptical thing for like, uh, so we did it when we were on tour. Oh yeah, me and you great. and Hannah. And I, I totally quit doing I, it. Yeah, I did that every day. Then I came back and I've been doing it since. Right. So it's now been like over two months. So I feel like adding more things at that point is like, that's fine. Yeah. But apparently not because I fucking stopped making so, my bed. <laughs> so. so you think there's a direct correlation between you doing the elliptical and not making your bed? I think it's like, I don't think that I can handle all of the things every day, which is so dumb. I don't know. Hmm. So what happens when you, when you got up, when you were making your bed, what were you thinking? Do you remember what your thoughts were? Was it an automatic action or was it like a, uh, I, I was like, let's, my bed. I was like, you can just come back up later and do it. And then I was like, no, you should do it now. You should do it now. Just do it now. Get it out of the way. And then I like did it. Okay, I'm reading this book right now called The Power of Habit. Yeah, you are. By Chris something or other. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's really good. And so it says part of uh, getting a habit is um, having a cue for that habit. So that's like a post-it that says do that or no? No, like a like because a lot of our habits are very subconscious. So like for, for me, I guess like looking at my bed and seeing that it's messy is a cue for me because I'm just, I don't like it. It doesn't make my, I don't feel like my room is as clean when my bed's not made or um, like, what do you do right before you do the elliptical? Do you do it at the same time every day? No. You do it at different times? Yeah. And I think that is another thing is like, do you get on a certain outfit before you do it? Yeah. I put on gym clothes. Yeah. But I, I honestly, I just feel like if I did it at the same time every day, I would have a greater chance of sticking to it. But is that, um, is that something that's actually doable with your schedule? It is. I you just, think so? Yeah. I just don't make myself do it. So many times I do it at almost midnight because I'm like, well, the date's almost over. Let me try to get it in. You and make I your literally, bed? No. I oh. go do the elliptical at <laughs> fucking 1130 at night because I'm like, oh. Well, there's the last possible second that I can do this. So, so let's do after this. you do the elliptical, how do you feel? I feel really great. And do you do anything else after that? Do you have a smoothie? Do you no? Nah, I like shower and then like uh, I'll like go to bed. Does anything feel good to you after you do the elliptical? Yeah, I'm like I'm awesome. You have I've a been sense- doing the elliptical for like two months. You have a sense of accomplishment. I do. Right, and then if you don't do it, there's like this. Yeah, I feel bad. You feel bad, and also I can notice a difference in like my body. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I have like you know, muscles. This is good. So you're getting the positive reinforcement of your body toning and the sense of accomplishment. Yes. So that keeps you doing it. Yes. Right. Even if it's not at a certain time. So with the bed making thing, what would you say happened after that? After you made your bed? Did you have any sense of accomplishment? Did you feel? Yeah. It's like getting it off on a good start on a good note, but still I'm like, it's eh, not strong enough. No. And then there's, you know, like a million things like that where it's like, I would love to be super disciplined where instead of just being like, Twitter's overwhelming, I'll only tweet sometimes. Just be like, no, every day you're responsible for doing this many jokes because it's a great exercise. I do a lot of writing packets. And the reason like me and my writing partner are good at them is because, you know, if you practice writing jokes like that every day on topical stuff, it's like a muscle. And I'd like to be worked out. So I just feel really overwhelmed when I think about all the things I have to do. But honestly, it's like firing off five tweets is not a lot. Like, what's my problem? For you, it's not. <laughs> but I'm just saying there's all these things that when I think about them, I'm like, they're not difficult or too much. Why do you, you resist put, so but much? But when you put them all together, it is very overwhelming. Yeah. So, but I need to put them all together. 
Well, when you when you look at them all together as one piece, it's very overwhelming. If you're like, I've got to make my bed and then write five tweets and then I've got to work out for 30 minutes and then I've got to write a writing packet and then I've got to... But that yes, sounds good. Finished. Like you're saying that, that sounds, right now. That sounds great. And I'm like, I could jerk off to the sound of that. It <laughs> sounds great. Like, can I just okay. do that? Are you the one we had the jerk off conversation for women? Yes. Okay. Well, that's another topic. Okay. Christine doesn't think that women can jerk it, which I think is ridiculous. I just don't think it makes sense to say that. I do not like gendered language for one. I also don't do it on purpose. The first word I think of when I think of jerking off i literally can't think of masturbation i go the first word i think of when i think of jerking well, off is if, jerking off if hannah is listening to this she she agrees with me and that's all that matters you guys do you agree jerking off for women it just i just imagine the jerk okay it doesn't we're getting off topic maybe you just don't rub hard enough for it to be considered See, jerking. that would be called rubbing off not jerking off but it doesn't occur to me to say that. So why should I change my language I didn't say for you? you? Should you? Good. I don't want to add to the plethora of things yeah, on your don't. list. I have a lot going on. I'm not changing that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't add another thing to the list. <laughs> no. So what I was saying is that when you look at it all as one big chunk, then it is overwhelming. But to break it down into little steps and one thing at a time and keep your mind focused on the very next thing, it's a little bit more manageable. Like if I were to say all that stuff all at once... It's just too much. But if I say, okay, I'm just going to write five tweets right now. Put them in my draft folder. Do that. Next thing. Just always keep it. It's, a, it's been called like keeping it in airtight containers. Day, day, day type. There's another <laughs> book I read where they were like, keep your day in just like an airtight container. and Only think about what you have. Right Are you selling Tupperware to me right now? <laughs> is that what this podcast I is I wish. Really about? I wish I was selling Tupperware. I would crush it. <laughs> I would crush all the food and put them in Tupperware jars. But seriously, so I have a to-do list. That's not, I mean, it's helping me some, but I gotta. I love to-do lists. I gotta do more. So what, what do you what recommend? What do you mean you have to do more in terms of what? Because like. On it, your list or do the list more? Do the list more. Okay. So what happens when you're not doing the list? What? I mean, I'll do some of the list and then other things I'll do that are not even on the list. And then I'll be oh, like, you know oh, what you write do those for things those? down on the list. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you cross them off. Yeah, I do that too. And another thing that helps too is I don't always do this, but I've done it before where I'm like, I feel like I just had this whole day and I did nothing. But then when I really think about what I did, I'm like, okay, I did some pretty major things. And some of those things were really multi-stepped. So I, go- so not Google, I but I started journal- journaling. Journal. Yeah, exactly. Like, this and is what I did today. See, that's another good habit that I've started that I've, I'm keeping. And I never was able to keep a journal before. And I'm on like entry 41. So I'm like, that's pretty good. Great. That's awesome. But again, it's like, I should be doing it every day. I'm not, you know, I do it as whenever it's, I can. It's baby steps. I know. I want to be self-actualized tomorrow. Can you help me? Oh, my God, man. I want to be self-actualized yesterday. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm starting another podcast. It's called <laughs> Slightly Bigger Advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have more of a degree. It's actually a smaller degree. I have a minor in psychology. This is why I was nervous to have Sophia on because she always gives me advice. And then she looks at when I give her advice, she just looks at me like it's stupid. That is so not true. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, no, no, try again. <laughs> Not even my face that you're yes, doing right now. Is. That's How your do you, face. I know what your face looks like. You can't You're see rolling it. your eyes Christine style, okay? I am not rolling my I'm <laughs> looking directly <laughs> Kyle's <laughs> laughing because he I, knows the face. I am looking at... <laughs> I have big <laughs> eyes, and if they look anywhere, it looks we like get it. they're You're rolling. Pretty, okay? We get it. <laughs> I just have naturally large, gorgeous eyes, and sometimes it looks like they're doing things, but they're just being beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> And that has been Sophia's episode. Thank you guys so much. I've had a great time. I don't really want my life to improve in any way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not able to help you with No, you actually are helping uh, because I feel like part of it is not putting pressure on myself because I feel like I'm giving myself props with one hand and then taking the props away with the other. <laughs> Cause I'm like, the Hey, props away? I am. I'm jerking them off. I'm just like, Hey, Sophia, like great job. You have these three habits you're doing. So what if you're not doing the bed one all the time? That's still like, wh- how great yeah. this two months ago, you weren't doing that, you know, but instead I'm like, okay, but what else are you not doing? So maybe that's really the habit. I think your habit is like shitting on yourself. I think you're right. <laughs> oh my God. Did you guys expect this twist ending? It's she just, just like, sixth sensed me. It's oh just like that um, 
You know how I'm addicted I've to worrying. I've been negative this whole time. <laughs> I see problems. <laughs> that didn't have as good of a ring to no, it. No, it's I great. I like it. I see dead problems. Bed problems. <laughs> I don't make it. It's true. So you beat yourself up for a problem. For, it's like you're always looking for something to shit on yourself about. It's true. And that feels comfortable. I guess so. I think it's because I've always was a like a high achiever and that was like a big part of my identity i was like really annoyingly like into being like doing well in school and like you know it's like if i take on a thing i'm like okay i want to be number one at it and i think whenever i'm not number one at things in my personal life i'm like what the fuck and i think it's just left over from being like a kid and my mom never like My mom was actually very anti tying my like achievement to my self-worth. Like this is a typical my mom story. I I came home and I was like, oh, my God, I got like a five on a test in Russia. A five is an A. So I was like, got an A uh, on the test, a five on a test. And she was like, I was like, aren't you proud of me? And she was like, do you go to school for me or for you? And I was like, for me, I guess. And she was like, then you don't need me to be proud of you, do you? And then she pushed you. And she then she pushed. pushed me into the sea. No, but she's like, swim, learn how, <laughs> but no. do it for yourself. <laughs> exactly. Are you learning to swim because you're drowning, <laughs> or because you want to better yourself? No, but I was like six or seven, legit. So my mom was never being like praising me for that. It's something I tied into that. It doesn't in my mean own. that you aren't always searching for that. Like, what can I do to get her to be impressed? It's not really even. I don't really think that at this point that I care about her being impressed. I think now I've become her to myself. Like Like I've internalized that not being that impressed. So I'm just like, yeah, okay, well, but is your bed made every day? (laughs) You like Shania Twain yourself. I did. You don't impress you much. I don't. So, yeah, I think that's... And I also have, like, a high self-esteem, so it's weird. I'm like, I think I'm like, you're pretty great. Why aren't you doing more? (laughs) That's, I mean, I think to an extent that's kind of healthy. (laughs) Sort of, yeah. But, like, when you say you want to be number one in your your personal life, it's, like, in comparison to who? No, that's the thing. It's, like, a weird goal that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. I just want to be like the best me and I feel like the one the versions of me that are not as good are just standing around being like, okay, well, we could be better. So like, what's your problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I'm thinking uh, there's this other book I'm reading right now called Loving What Is. We get it. You can read. By, God, by, does she brag like by, this on every podcast? I don't. I'm so pretty. I have big eyes. I'm reading two books at a time. You guys, this is an example of someone hearing something different <laughs> than what is said. It's an example of someone Sophie clowning on you. Actually, I love you so much. a case study. <laughs> this isn't even like an advice one. She's just like, look how messed up you could be if you don't listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> But it's uh, called Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Mm -hmm. And it talks about asking yourself certain questions when you have these thoughts that make you feel bad. Basically, her concept is that we feel like things should or shouldn't be happening. But that's not true because it is happening. And the more we accept that, the better we're going to feel. Oh, snap. Yeah, it's pretty freaking great. So and and it, and you apply it to anything that could happen in your life and you ask yourself a series of questions. So if you say um like what's a thought that makes you feel bad about your habits? Uh It's like like what I sit, t- tell myself when I'm not doing things or what do you mean? Yeah, like say you you didn't I don't think I'm qualified to do this, but say you didn't um, make your bed today. I'm like, ah, you're like messy. It's like not that hard. Just make your bed. Why are you so messy? Okay. And so is that true that you're? Yes. I am. <laughs> that, okay. Okay. Person. So what it, So you say you should make your bed. I'm like, if you make your bed, you will be less messy. Why don't you just do that? But then, like, what do you say to yourself? Are you negative to yourself about it? Are you like, you suck, like, make your bed, you should be making your bed, you're like, what, what is like... I do say, like, yeah, you should be making your bed. Right. 
I do say that. Yeah, in my head. So then you would ask yourself, is that true? Is that one like, <clears throat> is it true that you should be making your bed? Yes. Yes. And then can you know 100% for a fact that it's true? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, now you're like, is your bed supposed to be made? Like, is there a bed? I'm like, oh my God, she's blowing my mind. Maybe there's never been a bed this whole time. I guess basically it gets to a point where you you don't know for sure if something should is like with a hundred percent fact that something should be true like that you should be doing x or y or whatever so then you examine that like who who am i with this thought like how does that thought make you feel that you should be doing that not good (laughs) not good you don't feel good with it do you can you think of a reason can you think of who you would be without that thought or how you would feel. Probably just more chill. Yeah, so you'd be more chill. So can you think of a good feeling reason why you would keep that thought? Yeah. What's the good feeling reason? Just like the letting go feeling that you get, which is like a lightness when you're not just like shitting yourself. I'm sorry, I guess lot. I messed up. <laughs> is this not what you were asking? No, no, yeah. I was asking, could you think of a good feeling reason why you should keep the thought that you should be making your bed? Oh, like a, a reason that doesn't make me feel bad right. to make the bed? Like I'll feel... Like if you keep... Like I'll feel like the cleanliness or the stat, like the state of my room will more correspond to like how I want to feel which is like orderly and so that like everything is set for a good day or something so if you keep the thought that you should be making your bed then that will that would make you feel good to keep thinking to yourself i should be making my bed if i turn it so that i'm not doing it for a bad reason you mean no not that if you turn it but just the thought as is the thought that makes you feel not so chill Mm -hmm. can you think of a good feeling reason that you would want to hang out hang on to that thought i mean no i guess right so without that thought you would feel more chill Mm -hmm. right i would and then you turn it around god i'm not finished with a book (laughs) <laughs> should i come back <laughs> should you oh. <laughs> turn it around on me in classic therapy but it, it, it works like with another person i guess you could do it on yourself but then you would turn it around so say if i say if the problem was that your husband should be making the bed and then you're like he's a jerk he does this he's inconsiderate blah blah, blah. and so with those thoughts you feel not good you feel angry you feel resentful so then can you think of a reason why you would keep those thoughts that would feel good? No. Who would you be without those thoughts? Happier, chiller. And then you turn it around and you say, I should be making the bed. I should be doing this. But with this case, you're already like saying I already that. should be. <laughs> How would that work? I should, I should be making the bed. I don't know, dude. Dude, I'm going to come back <laughs> if I can solve this. Or I'm well, gonna complain, but I guess the point is like, is there a supervisor? <laughs> Kyle is a white woman. I feel like I'm entitled to call someone <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> but the but the point in all that is that like it's not the actual circumstances that are happening that make you feel bad, but it's your thinking around those circumstances and how that makes you feel that makes you feel bad. So if you could change how you're looking at it, then you wouldn't feel as bad. I think that's important. The framing of it. Yeah. To not make it another thing that can make myself feel bad. Make it a thing that can make myself feel good if I accomplish it. But then not really have like the devastating consequence thought of like, well, this isn't good enough or if I didn't do it, you know? Yeah. So how do you think you could do that? I think framing it outside of should 
but like this will be good. There's an expression that's like you shouldn't should yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty much. I feel like I should just if I wake up with the idea that oh, that'll be fun to uh it'll be fun or it'll feel good or lighter to like have a made bed. If mm-hmm. I think about it like that, I think I might be more likely to do it than if I'm like ugh, if I don't do this I'm messy. And then also like giving yourself some kind of reward after. Like it doesn't have to be anything like crazy. It, like, but what do you like? Like, would you, is there, dude, I think I need to get off of rewards. I was talking to my therapist about that and she's like, why do you feel like you need to reward yourself for everything? <laughs> and then she like broke me because I was like, fuck, why do I feel the need to what do, do you, that? What did she mean by that? Like, you know, um, just using any like kind of pleasurable thing, like, Something delicious to eat or whatever. Anything is like I a reward. I heard you shouldn't reward yourself with food. Yeah, and she's just like, why do you feel the need to reward Shit. yourself? She's like, just do the thing. That's its own reward. And I, I was like, oh, god damn. All right. But when you do the thing, it's a sense of accomplishment. And then that's like reward for yourself. Yeah. So She's like, just tune into that feeling. That should be enough of a reward. And I'm like, oh, damn. Okay, you're right. That could be a reward. But also, if you could do things that aren't like going to impact you in a negative Negatively, way yeah, yeah it'd like, be fun to think of a reward that is fun that's good for me yeah exactly like i mean i'll do like a bath and a book if i've like had a really fucking like productive day if you earned it yeah i'm like yeah you got to it's lay around in your own water but do you like nice <laughs> <laughs> what everybody you has their lay own around in I'm your like, own water like, do it piglet <laughs> oh my roommate's home it's not your roommate. It's actually my entourage. <laughs> What's up, Lil T? Sorry. My entourage me. is just one person. His name is Lil T. <laughs> um, but it could be something like a nice smell or like a nice perfume or air freshener, a candle or something that you get to light. That, like, oh, I like that. I have like, some nice candles. That the bed is made. You know, like there is... Uh, in the the book that I'm reading, the habit book, it talks about a case study with Febreze and they couldn't get people to consistently use it. But then they found out that the cue for using Febreze was after you clean the house, you spray it and it has to have a scent to it. And that's like to signify like the house is clean and it feels like a sense of accomplishment. So if you did fold your bed and then you put like a, a lit a candle or sprayed something on it, that's like, Hmm, that's, I like that. that that's that's like a, a really good idea. Reinforcement for it. Yeah. So do you have anything like that? I'm totally going to get a spray. That in itself is a reward. How fun. Ew, I'm going to go and time. smell a bunch of shit. And Just don't great. eat it. <laughs> well, too late. <laughs> <laughs> I've pumped several pumps of it in my mouth already. <laughs> okay. So Lemon what else? So, so that's the, um, the bed thing. I wonder if there's something equivalent you could do for tweets or if you could kind of lighten the pressure on yourself for all of those things in one day and say if i get three out of five that's pretty good or um or just chunk it down like this day and this day these are be my main two focus anything above that is just extra like this is a tweet tweet tuesday tweet thursday if i get five tweets cool on those days but other than that do you think I should alternate like in terms of say I have that's a goal and say I have a goal that's like um, emailing, say, three bookers. Would, would it be better to be like Monday, Wednesday, Friday? I email three bookers each day. Tuesday, Thursday, I do the tweet stuff. Or would it be better to break it down into tinier chunks and be like every day I do one or something. Hmm. I think it would depend. How does it work? I think it would depend on you. Like when I, I mean, knowing personally what it entails to email bookers, like if you have a good system set up, I think that's great. But sometimes it could be like something you have to break down. You have to find the show and then you have to see when it is. And then you, you write the, the email and find their contact. And it's, yeah, it all takes time. It, it takes a long time. So just as simple as saying email three bookers in one day, that's kind of hard. Unless... It could be that like you set it up to find all their contacts one day and then the next day. Um, Maybe you should work with a off. timer. Be like, ooh, I that's suspend. called the Pomodoro method. Yes. So, Tell me about this because I've wanted to try it. I think it's 20 minutes, um, but it's a Pomodoro is like this type of like in my mind, timer. I always say Pomodoro because those Pom- are tomatoes. Maybe it is. That's what them. it is. You're saying it right. Oh, I'm saying I? it wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because okay. it's a tomato timer. 
So you time it. Just makes me for- hungry for pasta. <laughs> someone talks about that method. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you grate Parmesan on top, right? <laughs> People are like, that is not the method. And I'm like, okay, okay. But is there garlic bread? <laughs> Sophia, she's so funny. I'm an idiot. Okay. Everything's about food with you. I know. Do you guys want to go to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's already out to lunch. <laughs> uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Christine Little. A little she's right. here all day. A little joke. I do. I am here all day. I live here, unfortunately. It's your, it's your house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is like all over the place. One. Pomodoro okay. me. Let's do So this. you just set your timer for 20 minutes and then work on a project for 20 minutes. It's as simple as that. And then when that's up, you have like a break or maybe it's 25 or 30. I don't know. And then um, you do it again. And I find that what happens, with, first of all, you're, it's supposed to be good to have like little breaks in between doing stuff. So you're not just like binging on it or whatever. I don't know. But it, it, the thing that happens when you do this method is that you will stay focused on what you're doing because you know there's a time limit on it and it'll like help you alleviate distractions. And then sometimes you'll be like, I'm so into this, I'm going to keep working a little bit more on it. And so it's extra. And a concentrated amount of time, a concentrated five minutes is better than a distracted 20 minutes. You know, so think about how you're going to be so focused on just that one task for that amount of time. And you can even work up to that amount, too. Like, if you're like, oh, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. No, 20 kind of, sounds about right. It sounds good, right? But even, like, if you really don't feel like doing it, you know, you could say, I'll do one minute. And that sounds pathetic. Thing. But then you'll, you'll do more. And that's the same, too, with, like, um, say something like making your bed. It's like you, you get up, you're like, oh, I got to make the bed, then I get the pillows. So the first step, you just think, okay, let me just get up. You get up. Okay. Let me just, I'll just put this sheet here. So it's like you're giving yourself little outs. You know, like with Hannah's thing, I'm like, just take the shirts to the, to the place and you don't have to do anything else. But then she wound up work up to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She wound up doing it because she broke it down. And, and she made all step. that money. She did. And so she inspired cool. me too. I was like, really I'm going cool. merch. And I did. Same. And you are too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Just make it into like the tiniest steps. The more you don't feel like doing something. And I it, love it. And Until it's like I you're can tricking it. yourself. Yeah. Because what happens is I you need build to be up. tricked, truly. You, you build up momentum for what you're doing. I hope it turns out that you're not Christine Little and this is not Kyle Clark because I love being tricked. And, and you're like, is- oh my God. <laughs> what? I've like, been your therapist this exactly. whole time. It's like a Mission it's Impossible like mask thing. I'm like, oh my god! Like our whole friendship is just yeah. been like a therapist. You're like, just, I feel so much better around you. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just tricked me into mental health. I'm like, bravo! I have a website. My hair is like this. You can't see it, but I'm like, Christine Little's been tricking people into mental health for years. <laughs> I love it. It all started when she was a theater major. Probably in Boston. <laughs> Boston sucks. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Well, is this it? Is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of that problem? I really feel better about it. Okay. Well, what, what were some of the key takeaways? Okay. Um, I feel like that's your job, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it my job? <gasps> yeah. Yeah, it is. Is that true? It is true. Is that a hundred percent true? Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, so my takeaway deep voice you get. Yeah, I know. I don't know what that voice is. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Who's what voice? Who? What voice? <laughs> this is who I've always been. Guys, my takeaways are um, that I need to be a little bit easier on myself because it's not helpful to getting things achieved or accomplished to just be like, yeah, okay, but you could be doing more. Um, and maybe like, phrasing things to myself when I do them to be like, Oh, here's the positive you'll get out of doing this as opposed to here's the negative you'll get for not doing it, which seems like, like discouraging right at the beginning. And then I'm going to do the Pomodoro method. I'm going to grate some cheese on it. <laughs> I'm going to do 20 minutes at a time. I'm really excited to try that actually. It's fun with all the shit I don't like. Oh, and I'm going to get a really nice spray. That's going to encourage me to do my bed and I'm going to have it right on top of my nightstand. So when I look at it in the morning, I'm going to be like, Oh yeah, spray. That actually gives me another idea. 
Tell me. Like a combination of the Pomodoro method. Like you set your timer for like two minutes when you get out of bed and like you make it like a game and race and see like, oh my God, I've done that before and people are coming over and I made the bed in like four minutes. So I was like, "Uh, four minutes? What kind of bed do you have? What do you mean? Like it's a lot or not a lot? Big ass bed. Four minutes? I mean, because like it all gets bunched up on one end. Oh, you're, yeah. You know what? I've shared a bed with you before. You are wild. Yeah wild because i have hot flashes so i'm just like a monster i do too bitch you're not in menopause i'm literally you don't know that yeah i do who fertile i can i work i wake up drenched (laughs) in sweat most days that's why i kind of quit straightening my hair why is she bragging again i'm so sweaty all the time (laughs) (laughs) it's sweaty all right well i guess that's it for that portion thanks when we come back we are going to talk to Sophia about her creative process on a little advice. Are back. Oh, now we are back. I thought we were back <laughs> earlier than we were actually back. <laughs> baby got I got my baby, my baby, my baby, my baby, my baby, my baby. I got my baby. This my baby, is the baby. silliest episode I've ever recorded, and I'm not sure how I feel about this. I think this. you knew that would be happening if I, I came didn't in. know it would be this silly. We what clown. if Obama listens to this? Obama loves to be silly. Don't you know you that about think him? So? Yeah. Obama, if that's true, I know you're my number one listener. Could you <laughs> review and comment? Please review and comment. Review <laughs> comment. Um, so I'm going to ask Sophs, uh, that's what I call her, short for Sophia. About her creative process. Um, let me see. I'll ask you this first. Before your greatest success, mm-hmm. and you can think of it in terms of, oh, my next guest is texting me. Um, you can think of it in terms of like uh, a writing job, an award, or like even okay. when you're in college or whatever, career wise. I'm going to say like my Comedy Central, this is not happening probably. Okay. So before your greatest success uh, with that, um, what mental shift, if any, did you have before that? Occurred? Oh, I totally did. I totally yeah. had a mental shift. Um, so basically, it was the year that I decided um, instead of being like, oh, I'm sort of going for things or whatever, I was just going to go ham on like opportunities. Can you tell people what ham means? If they um, Hard as a motherfucker. Okay. Um, f- I was just like, I'm going to go really hard at all, any opportunities. So like anytime anybody would post like, oh, I'm trying to book a show or I need someone for this thing or whatever, I would just like immediately take a screenshot, immediately like go send the email and just was on top of like Where did postings. That come from? And it was from, uh, from listening to a lot of people I respect uh, like on panels and stuff like that. And just in general, knowing this, but like having it become crystal clear that like women don't ask enough for shit. And um, that also a lot of people don't follow up enough and mm. ask again. We feel like if someone didn't reply once, we're like, well, they hate us forever. So bye. Um, totally. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that year I was like, fuck this. I'm going to be a man about this. And literally like my whole slogan all year was like, have the confidence of a mediocre white man. Just fucking go and just fucking <laughs> plug yourself into any fucking hole that exists. Not sexually. Because, you know, I'm not a real man. I'll ask for consent. Oh, no. But <laughs> roasted, Kavanaugh. Um, but basically, I was like, no. Every time you see a thing that you want to do or maybe want to do, I, I wasn't like saying pursue opportunities you don't care about. I was like, no. Anything you think that would be good, just go for it. And before, I'd only applied to like a couple comedy festivals a year, maybe a couple times. And I was like, oh, they don't like me. It's not a good enough tape. And it's like, it wasn't a good enough tape. But I'm like, no, pursue, try to get a good tape by this date, blah, blah, blah. So like a bunch of girls in the all girl comedy group that we were in on Facebook put together a taping. And it was actually like the best energy because it was all women on the lineup and a ton of women in the crowd. And it was just like a hot crowd. You know, you feel it. Mm -hmm. And I recorded my set like in January. So I had it for all of the festivals. And I was like, okay, apply to everything. Like apply to any festival, like make yourself like a list of ones and just like apply because you don't know what's going to happen. Before that, I was like, I don't have enough money. Submission fees are 35 bucks each. If I like submit and I, you know, don't get in, which is what I thought was mostly going to happen like it did before. So if I'm not going to get in, I just like wasted money. And I was like, 
But Sophia, the payoff could be so great. You don't even know what it's like to be at a comedy festival. So don't even say like it's not worth it before you even know if it's Mm. worth it or not. And uh, I didn't realize all of the things that would happen because I got into eight comedy festivals with that eight tape comedy first which was nuts and I went to yeah. all of them and I remember that year was you like, went every festival yeah. ever I just was like made. yes I'm gonna say yes to everything and it was amazing because when I went to festivals I realized like oh here's all the comedians that are amazing in all these places here's what I can learn from them it's like was so humbling going to all these places and being like oh this is the best of what every state has to offer and people are so talented and different and then making these friendships with people that you know we met Hannah Hogan I um, met you I met you oh, even well, we though were, yeah we knew each other we knew each other from LA we but we weren't friends. like friends yeah and we became like actually tight enough where we travel together for weeks at a time and mm-hmm. like share beds and like you know, it's it became an incredible thing that exposed me to so much. And then during that time, I also saw Kate Willett post. She had done This Is Not Happening on Comedy Central the year before. And she posted, hey, you know, this is a repost from Ari Shafir. They're looking to have more women uh, because they'd gotten heavily criticized for not having a lot of women um, on This Is Not Happening. Um, and not enough minorities so they were like we're looking for more submissions so if you have a story to tell like just tape a story and submit it and I was like oh you know what um I've been sort of messing around with storytelling this story about me having to translate my grandpa's dick surgery into Russian (laughs) to him while it was happening and I'd only told it a couple times and it took me a couple years to start telling it because it was legit so traumatic the first time I told it was at my own show surprise and people really loved it and I was like oh, this is a real thing I can like work out. It's super funny. So I worked it out and then Valerie was running an open mic at the time and I was just really proactive. I was like, hey guys, they're looking for women tapes. Let's tape all of these stories at like Valerie's mic. So it was like me, Valerie, a couple other women. And um, I had emailed Michael Merton who taped sets being like come over tape all of our sets for this so just organized it like really really quickly because they're like submissions are due within like a week or two wow so we were just like no let's fucking do this so I taped a story at an open mic um I I submitted it I I kind of like it was weird in my mind I was like I feel like I'm gonna get this because I was like I don't know who else has a story that's even remotely similar to this in it? I like scream in Russian and it is a very like visceral (laughs) fucked up thing. And I just was like, I don't care what your story is. It's not this story. So I thought, you know what, if I'm going to get my quote unquote, my first break, I think it might come from something like this. That's truly unique that I happen to have been working on. And so I submitted it and they were like, yeah, we love it. And then I had to very quickly like get my shit together and I booked every show I could in LA. I I ha- haunted everyone like a ghost just being like I need to run the story as many times as possible because it's 10 minutes, you know, mm-hmm. and in LA it's hard to get 10 minutes especially for like one story and not stand up. So I just was everywhere working it out and then they were also nice and gave me a bunch of spots at the comedy store with like Mark Marin and Greg Fitzsimmons who were also running their stories to tape and it was just incredible. And it was the hardest I worked on a thing, too. Yeah. You know, I ran that story so many times and they were like, we don't like the end. Change the end. So I had to come up with a whole end and then, you know, run it a bunch of times in front of people that could have just been like, no, you know. And then when I taped it, it was the best experience of my life because it was taping among like people that are fucking legends like Louis Anderson and Lavelle Crawford and Bobby Lee was super sweet and was there. And I was also, I think, not I think, I was the only woman on that taping. And it was, I think, like eight to ten men wow and i was also the first person having their first credit you know and it was really really just humbling because uh i knew that the only reason that that had happened is because i'd been putting myself out there so much and jumping on opportunities really quickly and also being ready for them by being like you need a tape i'm gonna organize a taping wow you know so your your shift was like go for it Mm mm-hmm Like, no matter, like, go for it, make it happen, no excuses. Go for it, no excuses, and don't look at the nose. And you had, like, a very laser-like focus with that. Yes, that whole year, I was, like, focusing on just getting myself out there, doing stand-up, you know, doing storytelling. And then that was, like, the first time that I, you know, went to Atlanta, where now I've been back a lot of times because it's 
with you a bunch too because it's our favorite city for comedy really and we would have never met those comics um that never gotten to do spots in those clubs where now i can wow. come back and get paid none of that ever would have happened if i didn't wasn't just like you know what get that fucking tape get the good tape try a bunch of times to tape until you have a good one do it early in the year so you're ready for all this festivals Dude, now i'm getting you pumped know? up get pumped i'm pumped yeah i love that and Thank just go you. for shit and don't think about the nose because i think before the nose i would like look at as signs of something i'm like the nose mean i'm not ready or the nose mean this isn't good and or i'm goes not good back to the work too yeah because it's like you're telling yourself this story and it's not it's not true. No. You don't know what anyone's thinking. You no. don't know if you were like on the precipice of getting booked, but then someone else had brown hair. Oh, yeah. You, know what? you have no so idea variables. why the no happened. Yeah. You don't know why the yes happened either. You just know it's good. Yeah. You know? And and when I also went to festivals, you know, that also opened my eyes. I'm like, oh, they're trying to put, up, put together a lineup. It's not about any one individual comic. They're trying to have people they're curating who really, a show. Yeah, they're curating yeah. an experience. So if you don't make it in, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not good enough or you're not good. The tape that I sent in, my comedy was just slightly different than it had been the year before. But the tape was hot. The jokes were slightly better. They were put together in a better set. I mean, it was all these factors that aligned. And my set was appropriate for like that year. Mm-hmm. Because when I tried sending that tape out the following year, not nearly the same was level of success. Was it the same festivals no different festivals oh the ones that i didn't make it into um or didn't apply to the year before i've gotten rejected to a lot of festivals and sometimes they're ones that i'm not even like stoked about going to and then totally. i get rejected and you get mad that and you i'm got like rejected. i forgot i applied to this but i'm so upset you know and actually that year that happened to me a lot that i forgot all what i applied to and honestly was a blessing because yeah. i would get like when i would get a rejection i would be like oh i didn't even remember this but also then i would get an acceptance and i would be like oh i also didn't really remember this yeah but some festivals you know you're waiting and you know the day that it drops and you keep checking yeah. your stuff and you're they're like, like oh my god and they also fuck with your mind yeah because, like, some people get their acceptances earlier some people later you're on the phone with all your friends did you get did you get a letter oh <laughs> it's <laughs> very it's very like it's- you can't get really wrapped up in it but here's the thing it's really just about the work and the thing that made me so happy was the work and going in to perform in front of people. That's the reward for all the bullshit and all the letters and all the yeses and all the no's. All of that is garbage because like all you really want is to just get on stage and do your shit and the opportunity to do that, you know, at eight festivals, to do that at taping, to do that. That was my reward for all the bullshitty applying and stuff. Yeah, and because now that's when how you, I want to look when at you it. focus so much of like getting in or getting out, like your reward becomes the validation of being like good enough yes it's like or whatever you make it instead of the real thing which is getting to perform which is yes. why you're in it in the first place and it was such a gift and getting to hang out with other comedians in other cities That's the best that was the gift that was like the the oh my god uh amazing all of the crap that you've been putting up with is to get to this point where you're with other people who do what you do who are great at it who you're watching perform and you're like oh my god i want to know like about your process and oh this joke is so killer and then you find out from them and they're like come to my city to do comedy and then you start booking your own tours because you know oh i in this city i know this person in this city i know this person oh i can crash with them then you offer your place to them like in the next two months months i have hannah hogan coming to stay with me i have oh, damon yeah. sumner from atlanta coming to stay oh, with is me he? yeah I sam that. mike's gonna come out again he's a boston comic that had stayed with me that i met at the boston comedy festival uh, the women in comedy festival in boston and you know you form these real friendships i mean i can't say how gratifying it is to know that all over the country me and you can go and hang out with people that are of our same mindset who do what we do who have great hearts who are so encouraging and inspiring it's amazing i i was gonna make a joke about you crying right now but <laughs> she's not but it was i couldn't agree more festivals yeah now i'm like really you like really pumped me up i'm like Good. ready to like submit to a bunch of stuff and not even care if i get in exactly not. that should be um let me see how much time we have Oh, my guest, my next guest is probably here. But I want to ask you to do, 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 do. OK, this is one I always ask people, like what your creative process is like. But I already kind of know that. So <laughs> you're like, it's going to be pretty boring for me. I might leave. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, tell it to Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> tell it to someone who cares. Yeah. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. putting my headphones on. So <laughs> go ahead. 
<laughs> my creative process um, for what? For writing jokes? You know what? Since I know your joke writing process, yeah. it's just basically with me. Um, what? <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about your writing writing process? Okay. So um, I write with my writing partner when we do like packets and when we write um, packets for TV shows to submit sorry, for yeah, writing right. packets for when you're, when you're trying to submit to get staffed on late night, like Corden or Fallon or any of the white Jimmy's that are on the air. <laughs> um, white Jimmy. I mean, there's three. It's pretty crazy. Jimmy Kimmel, James Corden. Oh, well, James that isn't a Jimmy. Yeah, he is. He doesn't go by Jimmy Corden. I mean, yeah, probably in private he does. Well, let's it just, doesn't matter. The point is, so when you submit stuff for, for that, I write with my writing partner. And then I also write um, like pilots for like TV stuff, comedy stuff on my own. So when you so, have a blank, like you're like, okay, I want to write a pilot for a show. Like what is the first thing you do? Okay, that's the worst part, honestly. The worst Ooh. part is the beginning. I hate it. So it's almost easier. I love writing with my writing partner because she's like a fountain of ideas. Um, so when I get like tired of my own ideas, when I'm writing on my own, it's like, no one's there to be like, okay, how about this? I'm just like, oh, this is all, all I got for right now. It's like, I got to go talk to someone or brainstorm or bounce ideas off of somebody else. So I can like come to what I actually want to write about. Um, mm. uh, whereas with somebody else, it's easier cause you're like building. So when you do say, so when you're like, I want to write a pilot, you kind of just have a brainstorming session first. Yeah. With, so the first one. thing I'll be like okay, like, what do I want to write about? And I'll be like, sometimes, a lot of times it'll be like, what articles have I read recently or books that make me think of things that really resonated with me? And then I'll like kind of go down a rabbit hole. I'm like, why did that sugar baby article really like resonate with me? What about somebody? Do you think about it in terms of like the theme of it and try to work from there? Or is it from a place of like, I like this idea of telling this story? I think anything where I'm like, why am I fascinated with it? Why am I stuck on it? You know what I mean? So like there's books I read when I was a kid that I still think about all the time. And and sometimes I'll go to that place. I'm like, what about that book was so compelling that you think about it still? And then generally thinking about the emotional connection to it will lead me to why I want to write about it. So, you know, I didn't know for a long time what I was going to write this current pilot about. But then we saw years ago this movie, Some Kind of Monster, which is like a Metallica documentary where they're in group therapy and it made me laugh so much and it got stuck with me like crazy. I was like, this is so nuts. This is so nuts. Watching people be in group therapy and what their group dynamic is like, I love that. And it sat with me for a couple of years until I could turn it into another idea where it like was mashed up with something else where I'm like, oh, yes, these two things together make a show. Um, so sometimes it'll be like that. So once you get that concept going, you're like, I'll be like, OK, so. For example, I've been trying to like make an idea out of my cancer. So I had cancer, right? And I'm like, well, I don't want to write something that's just like a sad story or like a resilient story about cancer. Like what about my cancer experience I found so different and something that people didn't really talk about. So that made me like dive deep into the emotional thing of like, oh, here's what people don't know about. Even when you know you're going to like live, when you find out you have cancer, it makes you want to fuck up your life. Or at least that's what it did for me. Hmm. So then it made me dive deep into that. I'm like, well, how did I want to fuck up my life? What about it? Then I would think about it and I'm like, oh, okay, well, here's the dark place I went to. So now my idea is like, okay, write a pilot about what if you had taken all the opposite choices of what you had taken when you were in treatment? So every time I had the bad idea to do something, but I instead did the right thing, I'm like, what if instead I did the wrong thing? So do you like um, block it out in terms of beats and like do an Yes. Yeah, so once I have a general idea, I'll write it down in like a paragraph and then I'll like try to blow it out for longer for like a page. So for a page, I'm talking about like, here's what I think the arc might be. It'll be like very vague. It'll be like, okay, in the beginning, you know, maybe she finds out she has cancer. Like in the middle, we're like seeing or whatever or opposite. I'll be like, you're seeing all this. This woman behave really badly, but you don't know why. And then say you oh. find out, oh, it's because she just got this cancer diagnosis or whatever. So I'll kind of write really that like out. I that idea too because it's like it kind of shows too that like we don't know what's going on with people and why yes. they do the things that they do. And we just make up a story about it. Yes. Usually making it mean something about us. Yes. And also it's interesting because I think women very rarely are portrayed unsympathetically in our heroes like 
people have trouble with that. They can watch Tony Soprano all day long and be like, he's problematic, but I love him as a hero or anti-hero or whatever. But if it's a woman like Nurse Jackie, it's like not as popular, you know? I really people, liked that show. But it just didn't blow up the same way, right? Like people just are uncomfortable if a woman's not like I nice really wanted or likable. So, yeah. So anyway, so I want to see. So to me, that's something to dig into, right? I'm like, oh portraying woman in, a woman in an unsympathetic way but that you still end up liking her i'm like i like that idea so then i'm like okay how do i weave that in so once i have a whole page of it let's say then i'll be like trying to break it into actual acts or whatever and i'll be like okay so the act has to end here 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 then i'll do an outline and the outline will be like pretty shitty and pretty general and then i'll go back in and make the outline much more detailed sometimes that'll have like bits of dialogue in there because that's like how you know you're like cooking already you're like oh i can imagine she would say kind of this and this Mm. so then you kind of are looking at your outline and it has a little bit of dialogue a little bit of description but like most of the beats are in there too and so then you kind of see the story forming and then you start writing so you do um so you first start off with the idea, write it out in a paragraph, then blow it out to about a page, and then from there, break it down into certain acts and see what like the overall arc is going to be. Yes. And from there, make it an outline that's... Oh, and sorry, I guess I skipped a step. When you're working on the arc, it's like that's when I would start to identify like the A plot, the B plot, the C plot. So I'll be like, okay, well, the main story is, say, like she cheats on her husband. That's like the main story in the episode, right? But then there's a B story which is like maybe we're following what the husband is doing during the day. Mm. And you're like, oh, okay. So that has, that's like a smaller story. So that's the B story. And then maybe there's a smaller, tiny, like humorous, uplifting thing that's sort of woven through. That's the C story. And it's like not that important, but you kind of need it for levity and you need to inject it between things to Brilliant. let other stuff breathe. Mm-hmm. So then you're like, okay, I'm trying to weave in the A, the B, and the C. So then that's when you start like really building that outline and then you're like okay so i need a scene between say you know like the woman and the dude she's cheating with but then the next scene should be with the with the husband doing whatever he's doing and then the c uh, scene co- goes here where you get a little bit of levity so then you kind of start crafting the a b and like c a together list. yeah like a set list and we're like okay the climax has to happen here so you're like okay well the a story climax is here but then the b here and the c here wow. and then it wraps up and then you get a tag so that's kind of how you break it up and then write it. And it you'll get stuck, but you'll get stuck a lot less if you do the outline thing first. Jeez. I feel like I could talk to you about this for like another hour or two. Well, I have like, plans. I want to... So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want to hear more about this, but I guess we'll just take it in private we'll another time because you're going to have to teach me. Oh, oh, I didn't invite you back. Oh, I'm just kidding. So weird because I, I started a competing podcast. <laughs> like I said. Oh, you are on a so podcast. Weird. What's your podcast? Uh, my podcast is called Reality Bites, Bites with a Y. I co host it with Courtney Kosak and Dave Rankin, and we talk about dating, relationships, sex, all that stuff in the digital age. And it's pretty interesting. We have like experts. And comics and just interesting people. And Courtney is your writing partner. She well. is my writing partner. So cool. And Full she's circle. Super funny. And Dave is who I write stand up a lot with, like I write with Christine. I'm trying to get Dave to go to this love event with me tomorrow. I think you should totally make him go. I'm trying. He said he had plans, but if the plans fall through, then he'll go. But I don't feel like he's going to go. I'm going to text totally- him and be like, Do you have plans? Are you lying Just, to my You should try Christine? to urge him because he could talk about it on your podcast. Yeah, I totally think it's good for him I too. I think so too. I think it's going to be, I don't know what to expect, but it's free and it's going to be fun. It's free and he could use to do something that's different from what he's been doing regardless of how it ends up, you know? I mean, if he can be okay with getting a finger in his butt from his doctor, he can go to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's the funniest. Um, okay, so uh, where else can people find you? Um, You're I am prolific Sophia Twitter. on Twitter, Twitter and on Instagram. That's the S O F I Y A. So holler. I talked over you when you said that. So the Sophia on Twitter and Instagram. That's right. I was telling you, them how much you tweet and how funny it is. <laughs> Thank you. She doesn't always tweet five a day. Nope. But, um, oh, and I thought of something else too. When you're asking yourself the questions of like, why did this stick with me so much? Like, what did this mean? You can also apply that to any bad feelings you're having. Oh. Do the same thing. And maybe you'll get a story out of it. I love Just it. Just a fun little thing. Okay. So this has been really great. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having for ha- me. For coming. You're so great and sharing and opening up about your very deep uh, <laughs> problems. problems. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love you so much. I love you, Christine. Um, and I love you, listeners. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget so to rate and review. Life. Please rate, review, subscribe. I, it helps it come up higher in the algorithm. And it's really good for Christine's self-esteem. So just I do mean, it. I mean, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> and then there's a Facebook group too. Join that and we can gossip about Sophia. Oh my God. I'm it's in the group. A, a little advice on facebook i don't know just google type it in the search engine yes so uh thank you guys so much for listening have a good day a little advice